Imagine this, your phone updates to iOS 18 overnight and now your photos app looks like Ooh. this. Yikes. Today, we're gonna to talk about the redesigned Photos app and the ways that you can customize it to make it work better for you. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the Photos app on my iPhone. You'll see that when I open it up, the tabs along the bottom are gone and the camera roll is gone and everything looks completely different. You've now got this extremely long page with albums and memories and people and trips and it can be really, really overwhelming. So let's start at the top. So as I scroll up here, you'll see that I'm now in the library. The camera roll is now completely gone, but there's a couple things you can do to make this library feel a little bit more like your old camera roll. You'll see that I'm selected on all, but I can easily click over to months or years in order to filter through my photos. You've also got this icon here on the bottom left with these arrows. This is gonna give you some filtering and view options that's gonna make it a lot easier to find what you need. You'll see here if I click on filter, you can search by favorites, edited, photos, videos, screenshots, and more. If you go into the view options, you can zoom in or out, you can change the aspect ratio, or you can look at screenshots or shared with you images. You'll see right here, you've also got the option to sort by recently added or sort by date captured. Let's give an example. If someone texts you a photo that was taken 10 days ago and you save it, if you sort by recently added, that is going to be at the very bottom because you just added it to your library. However, if you go sort by date captured, that photo is now gonna be buried significantly higher in the library because of the fact that it was taken 10 days ago and you've most likely taken more photos since then. One of the most notable changes here in the library is the way that you interact with videos. And I've gotta admit, it is far from my favorite user experience choice. Now, when you click play, it'll play within this kind of white bordered box. You can click to zoom in and it'll take up the full screen, but when you click to edit or scroll, it zooms back out. It's a little bit frustrating, but as of right now, that's what we're stuck with. So now that you're familiar with your library, let's tackle this extremely long page. To be honest, most of the stuff here is completely excessive and not necessary. But the great thing is Apple actually gives you the ability to customize what this page looks like. If we go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see customize and reorder here. Now it starts by listing every single thing. To be quite honest, it's completely overwhelming and unnecessary. I would actually recommend that you toggle it back to just a few options. So now that I've made those custom adjustments, you'll see that this page is going to feel a lot more manageable. It starts with pinned collections. The reason why I have this at the very top is because this is where I can quickly access favorites and screenshots, but you can actually customize this even more. If you click into pinned collections, you'll see favorites, screenshots, videos. If you click modify in the top left, you can add most of those sections that we previously removed, but they'll be easily accessible at the top of the Photos app. Maybe you wanna add recently saved or peoples and pet. It's pretty easy to do that and click X and then you are good to go there. The primary reason I have that at the very top is just for favorites. Next, you'll see albums here. You don't need to have a category for albums and shared albums because they're both within albums. I know that sounds really confusing, but if we click into albums here, you'll see I've got personal albums, I've got shared albums, and I can see all of the activity that's currently happening on the shared albums as well. That's why I don't think you actually need to have shared albums and albums on that original page. You're just adding extra clutter. Next, we've got utilities. Now, there's a reason you're going to need this. If you've got hidden photos, maybe you accidentally deleted something that you need to get back, maybe you've got duplicates or you wanna find a receipt, utilities is the way to do that. If we click here into utilities, you'll see a lot of different sub options where it's sorting all of your photos for you. You can look up duplicates, you can go ahead and look up things with your handwriting. You can go ahead and look up things with QR codes. There's a lot of ways here to search and sort and filter through images that you might be looking for in your library. 
Next, let's move on to media types. Here, you've got videos, selfies, live photos, portraits, panoramas. Now, this list might look different on your phone than it does in comparison to mine because it builds this media type list based upon the material that's in your library. So if you've got AI generated photos or videos, or you've got a lot of screenshots or recordings, yours may look different. Lastly, I've got memories at the very bottom, just because sometimes I do really enjoy clicking down there and seeing some albums or videos that Apple has automatically generated, and it's a great way to download those photos and videos and share them with friends and family. There's also two last things I wanna mention about the Photos app that you might want to use. If I click Customize and Reorder, and I will add the wallpaper suggestions back in here, you'll see this is now at the bottom of the screen. When I click into those, you've got all kinds of cool, fun options. When you click on one, you can easily swipe between different styles. You can change the icons here at the bottom. It's a great way to get inspired by what Apple is recommending from your library to customize your iPhone a little bit. The other thing to note is your little icon up here in the top right hand corner. When you click on this, you can see your name, the amount of photos and videos you've got synced with iCloud, and you can also see the current sync status. So maybe you're not on good internet or you've taken a bunch of photos that'll let you know whether or not those have synced into your iCloud account. You've also got things like shared album activity, whether you wanna see that, if you wanna see hidden albums, if you wanna autoplay motion or view in full HDR. There's a lot of different different options that you can toggle in here to make the Photos app work better for you. So I hope this video has helped you learn a little bit more about the new Photos app in iOS 18. Apple's made a lot of changes and completely restructured the way how it works. And I personally think they've made it a little bit less intuitive than it's always been before. If you learned something new or maybe I missed something really important, go ahead and throw it in the comments below as I love to chat with you. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.